Hello and welcome to another Unity tutorial video. Today I am going to be addressing an issue that someone came to me with and I want to try to go over it in a bit more detail with video explanation just so that I can get the point across and explain and show you and this person what it is I am describing to accomplish what they're having trouble with. So today we are going to be using lists of game objects and differentiating between multiple objects in the scene and what you can do with those game objects and the data they hold. To start I've got a blank scene. I have nothing in it right now and we're going to talk about the scenario. What this person described to me is they have a button we're going to go ahead and just drop that thing in a good place in our scene, just there. I'm not certain whether they were using 2D or 3D. I'm more comfortable with 2D, so I'm going to stick with that. They describe using a prefab, duplicated a few times. So we'll just go ahead and throw five of those in there. We've got our prefab down here, which is our large gray. It's just a little spaceship you see right there. They also had a player. So as you can see, I have this little red ship down here set up as a player i've moved the prefabs of the large gray around uh, my scene here i have now added the script machine components to the player prefab the large gray prefab the button uh, again i'm going to be using embedded graphs just for simplicity's sake in this description but it's up to you as to whether or not you want to use embedded graphs or an actual reusable graph. I have also added a new button in here called Spawn More. Very simple. Let me show you how the button works. Simple as that. You click the button and it instantiates a copy of the large gray prefab at a random location inside the scene with uh, zero rotation. So if we hit the play button here, when we click Spawn More, you'll see new ships just stop popping up. I have made a slight modification to the large gray ship so that when the game starts, they will randomly choose a color. Very straightforward, just so that we can differentiate between them more easily, even though they're not going to be moving or anything. It'll just be easier to refer to them according to whatever color they are in the scene. You see? And when we spawn more, they will also spawn in as their own color. Now that we've got the scenario basically set up. I want to stop for a moment and thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this video will be useful to you and you'll be able to learn something from it and uh, maybe even entertaining. I don't know. But if you have any questions, go down below this video, leave a comment. If you need my help with anything, check out my Discord, shoot me a message there, or feel free to check out my itch for any of the resources that I have made available to anyone. And remember, if you want to see more of this stuff, I need you to hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much, and I really hope that I can help you. I have made some modifications to the large gray prefab just to make things a little easier for us here. I have a variable called default color. When the game chooses the color for the ship, it sets that variable just so we have that to work with. I have added a capsule collider 2D to the prefab, and I have added a mouse down event here, which calls the custom event activate, and that just turns on a particle system, which I have applied to the prefab. So let me show you how it works here in play mode. Right now, simply when I click on a ship, it'll play that ship's particle system. Notice it doesn't happen on the player ship because the player ship is not really important right now. When they push the button, it would activate all of them instead of just one. We can manually activate them here, but instead it'll activate all of them at one time. That's not what he wanted to do, just wanted one. So how do we fix this? It's very simple, very, very simple. We edit our graph here, and here on this on mouse down, we are going to set an object variable called selected. That object variable will be set to true. And then in this one here, on button click, if 
the object variable called selected is true, then we trigger it. So watch what happens now. When we push this button, absolutely nothing happens. And you'll see I actually get an error down here. Variable not found, selected. Ooh. So we need to actually put in a little bit more. Object has variable. Selected. Then if the variable is set to true, we can fire. Now, here's the thing you got to keep in mind. When you're modifying prefabs like this, you are going to have to use your overrides here because for some reason, these changes to the script graphs don't carry over from the prefab. But now you'll see when we push this button, nothing's going to happen. Absolutely nothing happens until we click on a ship, which you'll see it activates it. And now this ship that we've chosen here will fire when we hit the button every time because that ship which ship is it we're looking at here i'm not even sure we'll find it here ah there we go you see the selected boolean if we manually uncheck that then nothing happens we click it again it checks it huzzah and then let's say we click on this one it fires now both of those are going to fire now what happens there how can we resolve that because we click on this one again, it fires and it's still true. And now we've got three firing, we've got four firing whenever we push this button. One way to work around that problem is by modifying the prefab once again. We are going to go in here to where we set the variable. And instead of setting the variable to true, what we're going to do is throw in a little bit more. So we'll throw in an if first. If object has variable, we will set the variable to the opposite of the variable. Very simple. If it doesn't have the variable, we will then do what we did before and set it to true like that. So what this does is the first thing it does is see if it has the variable. And if it does, it swaps it. Let me show you exactly how this works now. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just find our ship. And here we are. You see it's selected. So it fires. Click it again. And look at that. It is no longer selected. Look at that. So we can have more than one selected. We can unselect one and only have that one fire. You can have multiple selected. Look at that, we have all of them fire at once. And remember, we have this thing that we can throw more in here anytime we want and have only specific ones activate at a time. And now we have just this one firing. It doesn't matter at this point what's what. Nothing is doing anything unless we manually select it and then it will fire. How cool is that? We have more than one go doesn't matter whether it was in the scene before we started or whether we're spawning in afterwards because we're using that same prefab. One thing that I do really, really want to point out to you and recommend is that what we're doing here is actually really bad. This on button click that we've got on the prefab for the ship, this is not how you want to do this. You want this on button click instead of using a scene variable and everything to actually be on the button. So how do we fix that? 
I have removed the on button click graph from the prefab of the ship and moved it onto the button itself. So we're going to have to do some changes here. First things first, how are we going to figure out what we need to activate here? First thing we want is instead of having a scene variable called button, we are instead going to have a scene variable called ship. That ship will be of type game object, and we are going to take our assets and grab large gray 01. So now we're going to want to, on start, find all the existing ships that match with that one here. And how exactly do we do that? We will find game objects with tag. Now, there are two of them here. We want find game objects, plural. That one will return a list. And we're going to get tag here from that variable. Mind you, there are different ways you can actually do the get tag, but then we want to set scene variable called ships to that list. And look, now we've got a list, but that will only work if we have a tag set on this. So we're gonna add a tag, add a tag called ship, save it, set this tag here to ship only use it for that one and then we have to worry about the ones that we spawn right because this is only happening at the beginning so then we go into the spawn more button and we edit this graph and then we can do add list item what list are we going to add it to? We will do a get scene variable called ships, and that is our list, and the list item is there. So this is the button that spawns them. And as it spawns them, the new object is then sent and added to that list. So let's make sure it actually works how we want it to. So we go and look at our scene variables here, and we have game object array large gray large gray large gray large gray and we hit this button to spawn more and it fails why why did that fail let's take a look at the button and see it added it to that list so what went wrong well the variable here ships doesn't exist we want to create this variable so that we have more control over it. Because if you noticed, when we looked at it, it was not a list of game objects. It was something completely different. So now we go back in here and we look at this. And instead, it is a list of game object instead of what it was before. And then when we click Spawn More, look at that. It adds the clones to the list. How cool is that? And it just keeps spawning them. And now we've got this here, the scene variable that we can work with. How do we deal with a list? We've got these objects. They're in our list. The list can grow. But what, what, what does that do for us? Well, we'll go back into our button and take a look at it here. This is the button click that we're working with here, right? And so instead of this, activate, we are going to completely redo this section. So the first thing we have to do is we have to take the variable ships. And we need to go through that list and go through each and every single item in that list to determine what exactly we're going to be working with. So we've got our on button click. We've got our list, and then our body goes down here. And then our item is going to be, so this will be that. And that's all there is to it. Right? This should work exactly the same 
as it did before because for each item it will check and see if it has the variable and if it does it will check and see if the variable is set to true and then if it is it will fire the event and this way you don't have to have all that extra code on each one of the prefabs to go through and instead this goes through and it fires it and let's say after we activate it what if we don't want it to be selected anymore after it's been activated once to do that we've got to modify our large gray prefab again and the first thing we need to do is we already have it activating here and we don't necessarily need that that was just for show so we're going to remove that and instead we are going to set the object variable after it plays to false We'll set the object variable selected to false after it plays. So then we hit play. We won't get our burst of light when we select them, so we won't know which one is selected. But let's say we want to select number one. We click on number one, you see it's selected, and we hit the button, it fires, and then it gets unselected. So we have to select it again, and we can do that one here, and they will both fire. But then we click the button again, nothing's firing. We can select three of them. They all fire once, and that's it. Very simple and straightforward. I would like to remind you that this video has been made in response to a question someone had for me. This may not fully apply to a situation you're in, but there's a lot you can do with what I've shown you here, and there is so much more that can be done in a system like this. If you want to see more or if you have any questions about what I can do with this system or other ways of changing how this works, let me know. I'll be more than happy to respond, maybe even make a video going into more depth in this scene and this specific idea. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for watching this video. Uh, please, again, if you enjoyed this video if you learned anything from it please click that like button if you have any questions or comments leave them below the video so if there is something that you want to know now let me know and I will see what I can do about teaching that to you right away see you guys again next time have a great day